How do we know when something isn't coming and it hasn't come for a long time if it's not in our vortex and we're looking at it in the wrong way or if it is in our vortex and we're not doing something right to get it? Does that make sense? How do I know if what I want is the right thing for me to want? Is that what you're saying? What if I'm asking for something that my inner being doesn't want me to want? Is that the question? Yes, I think so. I think that's the Ask question. Ask your question again. There's something I've been wanting for a very long time, about five years now, and it hasn't come. And I feel like I've been doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, I feel like I've been feeling good. I've been feeling like I've been letting things go. I've been happy. The only thing you've been doing that's keeping it from coming is noticing that it isn't coming. And if you can just feel with us just a little bit here, if you will admit to or acknowledge the dissatisfaction of that, because, you see, you're coming to a sort of logical assumption. Well, if I want it, and if I'm doing everything right, and it isn't coming, then my inner being must be protecting me from it or keeping it from me. But that's that justifying rationalization stance that so many people offer about so many things. Because after a while, if you've wanted something for a while and it hasn't been coming, then it feels like then I should stop wanting it. But what we want to call your attention to have you been able to stop wanting it? No. <laughs> no. And so you're not wanting to give up the desire. What you're wanting to give up is the resistance to the desire. And it really is as simple as it feels so weird that it could be this simple. But Abraham, really? Could my awareness of it not having come yet be the only thing that's in my way? Yes. It's taking score. That's why we talk about thinking of butterflies in blue glass, showing yourself how easily you can attract things that you don't have habits of thought that are working against. And it's easy to develop a pattern of thinking of me without it, 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 so much so that you can't be with it. And so change the subject or find satisfaction when you think about that subject. But those are your two options. And either one will work. Changing the subject's easier. You could have 10 things you want, and you could be thinking about all of them equally. And some of them you could be allowing, and some of them you could be resisting, just depending on how you feel about them. Right. I heard um, the, the girl that just went to talk about her child, I heard her the very first day, and she asked about her physical being. And her question was, can I, or is it there? And you said, yes. I think I'm looking for that, just to know it's there in the vortex. Well, we say to you that it is, but in some ways, you see, this is what's going on that's in your way. And this question that you're asking of us, you're asking us to do something to get it out of the way. This is what's going on. You're saying, I want to see it before I believe it. And then you're saying, and since I don't see it and I don't believe it, Abraham, can you see it and believe it and convince me so that I'll then believe it? Yes. Yeah, that's we, what I'm looking for. Yes, please. <laughs> and so we say, if you desire it, it does exist. But you've got to find a way of feeling it, even though you can't see it or hear it or smell it or taste it or touch it. And the path to it is through satisfying thoughts. Let's just play with this a little bit because... It's probable under these conditions and with the power of your desire that as we chew just a little bit that you could find the path through dialogue to believing it. Want to talk about it? Yes. This is not a big deal. Just give us some soft, satisfying statements about this. It's a relationship with a specific person that I've been wanting for a long time. Some soft, satisfying... <laughs> some s because there was nothing soft about any of that. Um. It, it, you went right for the throat on that one. It's a specific person that I do not believe is coming to me. So get more general. It's a, it's a, it's a relationship that I want, that I feel like would make me very happy. I think so too. But can you 
find anything about relationships that is satisfying, that is general enough that you don't aggravate the subject in focusing on it? Can you go general enough about a relationship to feel satisfaction without aggravating? That's I you, think I can't. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe you haven't known what the path of least resistance is. Maybe you've gotten so specific and you so don't believe what you're specific about that it's, I want it, but I want it, but I want it, but until you're weary. Can you back away from the specifics of it? What is it about a relationship that appeals to you? What is satisfying about a relationship? Having fun, sharing things with someone yeah. that you know it's going to be really fun and communicating. And so you're doing that all the time with a lot of different people. So you know that's satisfying. I, I do. I do. Yes. So what else? What is particular to a relationship that feels extra, extra, extra satisfying? Not particular to this relationship, but what is particular to a relationship that is so satisfying? Belonging. Okay. So let's focus there a little bit. Belonging meaning. Flesh that out a little for us. Belonging. Um, to it. No, not feeling lost. Not, not feeling lost. Yeah. That's... I don't feel like I feel lost. I don't Belonging feel lost. then meaning being I, important? Maybe. Is that, I, I don't know. I mean, being someone's dominant object of attention? Yes. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Being number one important to someone? Unfortunately, maybe. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no matter what? No matter Belonging. what. Belonging. Now, belonging is a natural quest. It's a natural state of being is at the core of you because you are an extension of source energy and you so know where you belong. You so know that you belong in a state of worthiness and that you belong in a state of happiness, that feeling good is where you belong. You know all of those things. But sometimes when someone holds you as their object of attention and they're tuned in like that, it makes you feel it extra much. And so you've come to associate that belonging with someone else's attention upon you. Someone who's reflecting it through their gaze and through their touch and through their tenderness, through their presence. And so you've been listening to us, blah, 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 on and on and on we go about looking for love in all the wrong places and looking for belonging in all the wrong places. But still, isn't it nice to belong somewhere? But the thing that we want you to feel is that you have to conjure somehow a feeling of knowing that you belong before that belonging can happen. Isn't that weird? If someone would just come to me and I would belong there, then I would feel belonged. <laughs> But how can I get that turned around? You've got to find some way to notice that satisfying feeling rather than noticing the absence of it. And we know what you're talking about. There's something kind of nice, but there is this satisfaction of knowing who you are and knowing everything about your belonging. I'm a creator and I belong there. As you own your alignment, then your need to connect with others becomes less of a need and more of a satisfying experience when it happens. We want to activate within you in this conversation is your core belonging. And once you've accomplished your core belonging, then you can romp around with others and not be codependent. But as long as you are looking to them to belong to them and them to belong to you and those relationship vows stink like they do, they're so laden with insecurity. No matter how bad you are, I will continue to love you unconditionally. <laughs> ah, yeah, I will do the same for you. No, you won't. <laughs> No, you won't. You got to find that core belonging. It's the ultimate state. We like your word so much. No one's ever offered it in this way. The belonging is the ultimate coming home, knowing who you are. It's the ownership of the core of who you are. That state of being of your absolute confidence that comes only from your pure connection with source energy. Oh, and once you found that, and you do here and there and here and there. Then what happens is someone else who's also found it 
is a cooperative component with you and there you are in this most logical sequence together. So when you think about that feeling of well-being, that feeling of core connection, and you are in that satisfied state so often, and then when you focus upon someone else, you just feel the compounding of that. It's the difference between, it's the absolute difference between, so good we're going to milk it and hold you in suspense just for a moment between need and desire. Because in belonging, there is no need. And in needing, there is no satisfaction. And in desire, there is satisfaction. And in belonging, there is satisfaction. But in needing, there is no satisfaction. But in desiring, there is satisfaction. Can you feel the difference? Yes, I do. And so, as you get off that subject a little bit and find satisfaction, satisfaction, satisfaction in this and that and this and that and this and that. And in the satisfaction, you consciously acknowledge you're in the receiving mode of what? The receiving mode of receiving mode of what? The receiving mode of what? What influence am I under? Then that desire pulses purely within you and someone matching it to perfection flows into your experience and you own it together and then you truly know we belong here. We belong here because we have belonged to our core right from the beginning. And as we have each found our core, then it is logical that we belong to our cores as we are together. Feel the difference in that? Yes. You're not fulfilling your connection with your inner being superficially through me, nor am I. We have both found our connection to our inner being, so we are both the real deal. We are both tuned in, tapped in, turned on. We are neither one with need. We are both fulfilled. We are both belonging. And now we are romping around in our state of fullness together but we don't fulfill each other we were fulfilled before we came together but we came together because we are mutually fulfilled are you sort of yes. kind of getting this oh i'm totally getting it yeah and i think i just needed to know that that's what i'm doing wrong i think that's because i'm doing anything wrong you're just noticing a little bit too much of what is you're taking score too soon and so we have some questions for you what is it that you are truly wanting to belong to your own expansion, your own evolution, your own becoming, your own eternal. I want to be happy. I know that. I want to be happy. Is the word belong a helpful word or not a helpful word? Maybe right now it's not a helpful word. Should we keep word. it or throw it out? Belong. I want to belong. Well, how about the word own? I want to own it, which means I want to know it, which means I want it to be there for me. It's just semantics. We're just wanting you to feel what belong means. And if there's anything that you belong to or anything that belongs to you, it's your connection with your source energy. And as you tend to that, and that's not just a little piece of what you're looking for, it's the most important thing that you're looking for. In fact, it's so important that every moment of satisfaction is tied to it. Then you just keep finding it and belonging and finding it and belonging and finding it and belonging and in belonging there is no yearning in belonging there's just desire for more motion forward can you feel how it just cleans all of that yes. up this conversation has done the best job of any conversation that we've ever had of helping us to help you all to understand the difference between that yearning needing thing and that delicious moving in the direction of your desire thing it speaks to satisfaction and dissatisfaction in such a strong way and most of all it helps us to emphasize the difference between that mutuality in other words you're wanting to belong to someone so you're seeking mutuality so you're always with this person what you're wanting to belong with is this and then this will join you there but if you're looking for this instead of this you will never find what you're looking for. It will never be enough. You will never feel like you've really come home. And satisfaction is enough. It's enough, right? It to be satisfied is enough to get everything why is you it, want. Why is it enough? Because it feels good. And why else? It's got to be enough because it's all I can reach for right now in any moment. It's got to be enough because I can't find the other and I want to be satisfied. So it's got to be enough. I am satisfied with this. It's enough. And that will lead to more and more and more and more. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next